Hey guys, well today I just want to come out and uh, get a little dirt time in. Uh, I'm just right behind my house. I'm only about two, three hundred yards behind my house. Not, not anywhere close to my bear bait. Semi close, you know. Anything, anytime you're out in the woods with bear bait, it's it's a little closer than probably what you want to be. But I don't know. I don't have a problem sleeping out here. Um, the bear, he's hasn't been back anyway, so maybe this will drive him back. Anyway, I'm just gonna set up uh, my hammock. And I know Travis and Justin from the Wolf Customs page. Uh, you guys showed us uh, your setup. I just want to take a few minutes and show you mine. And then uh, a couple other things too. An outdoor cooking type setup that you know some people may or may not like. It's just a, just an idea, pretty common. Um, and anyway, I'll grab the camera and I'll kind of show you where I'm at. I'm in a stand of. Uh, Got some nice birch trees here. Uh, there's some maple, some oak. This most of my property is pretty thick. This is a nice little area here that uh, doesn't seem to be quite as thick. And I've wanted to camp here before and just never done it. Which a bit. tonight I'm going to go ahead and give it a whirl. So I'll grab the camera and show you around. So I'm thinking I'm going to utilize that tree right there and that tree right there for my hammock setup. It's a little far apart, I may change my mind. I'm gonna look around here a little bit. But anyway, there's some, some of what my area is gonna be like. Now we had a pretty good storm here. I was, I woke up in the middle of the night and it was really pouring, but I had no idea the wind was as bad as it was. I had trees across the road um, I had to remove before I was able to go to work. And you can see here, this one's just kind of a, dead tree. I don't think the wind really did too much with this one, but so this one, the top snapped off. You can see kind of where it snapped down there. And these popples or the aspen, whatever, they're not very strong, so they do tend to snap, but we're not expecting anything like that tonight. It's too, it's cooled off. Um, we only get the major storms when it's really hot, but it's, it's barely, it's like 72 out. It really cooled off. So this is my area I'm gonna spend the night in. So I'm gonna set up my hammock and I'll get right back with you. I don't, I don't know if you can see this, but I don't wanna set it up here. This is a deer trail. I don't want some stupid deer smacking into me in the middle of the night. But anyway, I'm gonna set up and I'll get back with you. Uh, one more thing, I guess I was gonna show you my setup before I, before I unpack it all. This is a uh, Pathfinder bottle kit. It's just their, standard bottle kit but this is a nice paracord strap it's got a king cobra weave on it that I got from the paracord guy I actually was able to do a trade with him and he sent me this strap and it's an adjustable strap you just it's up as high as it'll go now if I were to slide this down it would give me if I was a little taller or something like that it would give me a little more adjustment now I did ask him on this setup, one thing that I did notice was these clips. Hopefully that's focusing, I'm sure you can see it, but these clips are plastic. And to me, well, I thought they were plastic. To me, they felt like for sure the weak, weak link of the system. And I, I'm sure they are, but I contacted him and asked him about them and Everything is made in the U.S. The hardware is all U.S. made. But these straps or these clips are actually nylon, which I guess is a better product. And he says he's been making them for three years now and never had anybody call and say they broke them or anything. So, and he's a real nice guy. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd show that strap. It's pretty cool. I got this set up kind of for my day hikes with my wife. We like to to cruise out and it seems like I'm always the one carrying everything which is fine but I don't really feel like I mean I'll carry a lot of stuff but I want her to carry her own water and we have two dogs too so we usually carry water for them too so a couple of quarts of water especially when it's hot out you need that for two people and some dogs um, anyway that's this setup I'll just set this down and this is just kind of something I was messing around with trying out um, my bedroll on a strap, kind of like a haversack, 
Um, I'm not sure I really like this all that much as far as it's just a little too much weight for me. I really am partial to backpacks and you know I could have fit all this in my backpack no problem. But it's just something different. I thought I'd try it out and it's nice to try stuff out when you're real close to home. You know I don't want to be on a five mile hike and figure out I don't like something. But I kind of strapped my my hammock to my bedroll. Now another thing I got in this trade with the paracord guy were these paracord bedroll straps. And I'll take this off here. I got this this other strap I got from an old army haversack. This strap. But when I take this apart, I'll get a little closer view of it. But I think that's pretty cool. I like these bedroll straps a lot. I like actually the strap, everything. It was, it was real neat. So now I'm going to get set up. Okay, guys. Well, here's the setup minus the tarp. Um, I decided to go with these two trees here. I'm uh, glad no one was here to watch me set this up because it took me way too long. I don't know what the problem was. I had it set up once in one spot and just uh, didn't like it so I moved it but man I need some more practice. <laughs> I've only done this, well I've done it enough times I should I should get it, I should be fairly decent at it but I don't know I just uh, was screwing around. Anyway, this is a Hennessy hammock and it comes with the bed, the bug net already on it and these are my wool blankets I'm going to use tonight. This is that's going to be my under quilt. This blanket is fairly thin. I got this at a thrift store. And then this was my latest score. I got this at a thrift store as well. So hopefully that'll be warm enough for me. I've tried it before with just a wool blanket and I thought I was going to freeze to death and it only got down to about 68. But with that extra under quilt, that extra army blanket, I think that's going to work out just fine. So I will set the camera down and show you how the tarp goes on. It's, well I guess I'll show you right now. This is how it gets hung. The ridge line is how it gets hung and it's already attached to this piece of cordage here. It's thinner than 550 cord so I don't know if this is the same sort of cord that you guys are doing your whoopee slings with or not it's got this setup on it right now so when I put the tarp on it I can just adjust this knot to the corner of my tarp the tarp that came with it wasn't very big um, I read some suggestions that said to buy the bigger tarp that was offered with it so that's what I did uh, this is a backpacking hammock. I think it only weighs about a pound and a half. Let's see what it says here. Ultralight backpacker. Um, weight one pound 15 ounces. Set up two minutes. Maybe if you're a world-class hammock setter upper it takes two minutes. It takes me a little bit longer. It comes with these straps so that you don't, some people say the 550 cord can damage a tree. I suppose if you had a softer bark type tree, the 550 cord might damage it. But those straps are kind of nice. And like I said, this side's got the adjustable knot. And then if you get seasick or whatever, you can kind of do these shock cord tie outs and maybe tie it to a tree and it'll help with the sagging or the uh, swaying of the hammock. I'm going to go ahead and put the tarp on it. Um, it seems like it's nice. I mean, I don't think it's going to rain, but you never know. I felt a couple sprinkles here a few minutes ago, so I want to get this tarp on there. So I'll reset up the camera and we'll get going.
I'm not a big knot guy, so I don't know a lot of knots. Most of these knots are half inches I'm using. So there was a little tree, a little dead tree, where I wanted to hang this corner. I want this corner about right here. And there's nothing to really hang it to. I suppose I could go almost have enough string to come to here. Actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. I always carry a little extra paracord with this setup. So with this, I think I'll just try a splicing knot. I don't know if you can see this or not. Like I said, I'm not a real big knot guy. I'm trying, trying to learn new stuff. Takes me a minute to figure out what I'm doing here. This is real quick, and I know, I know you're not going to be able to see it, but this is just, I'm not a knot guy, like I said. But this knot will splice those two together. Okay, so that's it. Here's my setup for the night. I'm going to clean up around the ground a little tiny bit just so that when I wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, which is always happens, I don't run across some sticker bush or one of these pieces of downed wood or something like that. One thing I will show you that I have quite a few of in my woods are these wonderful little things. We call them prickly ash. I don't know what the technical name for them is. But these little wonderful things. I know they're not huge thorns, but uh, they hurt. So, I don't know if that's going in focus or not, but whatever. They're just a little pain in the butt kind of thorn. So, and they get big. Well, not super big, but I mean they get they get big enough where you don't want to mess with them. I think I'm going to have my fire over here. I don't want it super close to my setup, but I'm thinking I'm going to have it probably right here. I'm going to clear away some of this debris, and we'll get a fire going. I think I'm going to try out my uh, bow and drill from. I didn't bring any bearing block or anything, so I'm going to give that a whirl. No matter what, I'll have a fire tonight because I've got flint and steel too. But I'm gonna try the bow and drill. All right, I'll be back. Okay, well I'm gonna start gathering my tinder bundle. Um, this birch tree is uh, shedding its bark pretty good. I'm just gonna be real careful and not rip anything completely around it. But all this stuff, you know, this can be harvested real easy without hurting this tree at all. Now I've seen what happens to trees when you 
go completely around the circumference of the tree yanking this bark off and it's not pretty. It, uh, there's no need for that. You just go real careful and you know peel this stuff off. It's, it's a piece of cake. Now you can do that off this living tree. The reason I did it off of this is, I mean, just look at it, it's just shedding it like crazy. I'm going to have a double handful of this in no time. But uh, I'm stuffing this in my pocket here. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to, if you didn't come across a tree that was, I see that's not going to hurt that tree, it's it coming off anyway. But I don't want to get any deeper than this stuff. But, uh, the reason I'm taking it off this tree, like I said, is because it's shedding it real good. But you see all the stuff on the ground. I mean, you can take just a little smaller piece. It's going to be kind of hard to get some stuff off, but you can still get it. You can take your knife and cut along it and peel this bark off. And then plus, you know, all this stuff is flammable. You want the smaller, lighter stuff for the bird's nest, but you can separate this into a couple different pieces. You've got the, the inner part and then the outer part. And uh, you know, you want that fine stuff for the for the bird's nest. If I was gonna do a ferro rod or something, I could take my knife and just kind of rough this stuff up. And sometimes that'll kind of scuff up where you can, you can see like right there. How it's kind of separating from the other bark. The outer bark is separating from the inner bark. Um, that'll take a spark real good. All this stuff will burn real good. And then there's always all this rotten dead stuff on the ground. You can harvest all this stuff. And you know, even just bark just laying on the ground. This is a little damp, but it'll still burn. So I'm gonna go collect uh, some more of that stuff and see this one's basically a dead tree right here I've got no problems uh, I'll look up really good and make sure there's no yeah there's some live stuff up there so I want to be careful with it but you can tell yanking this stuff off right here that's not gonna hurt nothing look at that that piece is dead anyway so I'm gonna gather some tinder bundle and then I'll uh, start making my bow drill set Okay, well, I think I'm going to give it one more shot. Um, I just made a new notch, made a new spindle. Um, that other spindle actually had a crack in the base of it, It, because it, uh, I wore it down. So I saw that earlier, but I mean, I had worn it down so far, it finally got to there. So we'll give it another try. If this doesn't work, I think I'm going to work on this notch, as, or this socket as much as possible, and then if this doesn't work, I'll just uh, flint and steal it. That's no reason why this should be taken being this hard. It's uh, one huge reason is these uh, wood bearing blocks are so hard to get the right rhythm down and to have no friction in them. See now. It's That's fine. I've got a nice bit of dust built up. And what happened is the end of my spindle is so punky that it actually broke off inside my bearing block. So now the notch is totally full of dust. Not the greatest dust, but it's dust. And I will sharpen my spindle down a little bit more. Put another leaf in there. And this next time, we should be able to go for broke. And like I said, if it doesn't work on this time, we'll change fire methods. So nice to have that option.
No, it's not going to take. That's okay. That's all right. It, uh... hmm. Kind of bumps me up. This shouldn't be this difficult. It's, uh... Looks like I got one more try left in it. These wood bearing blocks, I mean even just a rock or anything, it's just so much nicer. About the time you're ready to get it, get the coal going, it kind of pops out on you. Or it stops being, the friction just builds up too much. And this isn't going to work either, but that's alright, we'll try it anyway. I'll be right back with Flint Steel. Okay, well I'm back. Um, you know, what can I say? It doesn't always work. Here, I see I've got a couple of cheater sticks in here, a couple of micro infernals. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use a piece of char cloth. And a nice piece of Flint. and a fire seal that Kevin made for me. Here's my tinder bundle. Got a little bit of dried grass in there. Mostly, I was decent, I'm gonna fly right over me. going pretty fast but if, I, if it was hunting season I might have had a chance those are pretty low um, fire steel that Kevin made me um, my tinder bundle I've got a little bit of bark in here uh, just a tiny bit of dried grass and mostly birch bark the real fine birch bark stuff I just kind of processed it down got some dust and some really minor flakes cooking in there and we'll see how that works Put my micro infernos back. Set that there. Piece of char cloth. Bam.
All right, so I got all my little sticks on there. See that birch bark, it just takes off, so I don't want it to get too out of control. So I'm going to put a couple nicer pieces on there. It's going to be my pleasure to burn this one up. cooking on this fucker. First I'm gonna put away my put away my flint and steel. Thank you Kevin. That sucker really throws some sparks man. I don't know if you can see that. Really goes really does good. cutting corners I think on that bow drill fire you know you just a guy gets in a hurry done it a hundred times and I've done it a hundred times where you just walk out and grab the stuff and well I don't know about a hundred times but I mean you've done it quite a few times where you just walk out and grab the stuff and make it and it works uh, real good but you know friction fire is never a hundred percent and I failed that time and that's that's okay so we got a nice big oak tree here um, and we got some dead branches right there. I'm gonna use those to cook with. And I gathered a couple right there. So I'm gonna throw some of those on the fire and when I get some coals, I'll get back with you. Okay, well while my fire's burning down and getting ready to cook, I thought I'd just show you. Got like a little dry uh, water course or something here. It's dry right now. It only usually catches the runoff. It's not like it runs any time during the year. Um, but I was out messing around over here. Found something. If I can remember where I found it. It's a neat little thing here, the deer, I've got a open field next, next door to me and the deer like to use this to get to my woods and other people's woods. But that's what I'm coming for right now. Nice little piece of chaga right there. I don't have a spear point with me today, but I've got this nice stick. And There still may be some in there. I don't know if I can get up there and get that or not. That's what the spear point's nice for. That's a nice little piece of chaga. There's not much left up in there. I mean, if I was agile enough, I suppose I could maybe try to get up there. But, 42 and a broken body does not equal agile, so that's where that spear point would have been nice. But the shape of this chaga, it grows in different shapes, it's kind of funny, but uh, the shape of this chaga, a lot of it just pops right off when you hit it like that. I mean, all this stuff's real good fire starting material. That's good enough for me. So, 
Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought that was pretty cool. I was just out here walking. This is my property. I found some chaga on my property before, but the further north you go, the more you find. And that was pretty cool. Nice birch tree here. Actually, that one might be dead. They don't last very long. They, they tend to die before they get too big. I would have liked to have tapped that one. That's actually part of that's still alive. The right side's dead. Left side's not so good. Or left side's doing better, but anyway, and you see uh, the leaves are starting to change here. First of September, starting to fall. So, all right, well, I'm gonna go back to the fire.